Bitcoin is produced by conduit and the fundamental property is that it's storable. Now, this has two major implications. The first is with green, you're able to unleash massive attacks that devastate your opponent because you can store up a ton of it and then unleash it all at once and build a ton of attack all at once and surprise your opponent, plan out very epic timing attacks. The second, more delicate property is the fact that it gives you economic flexibility. Because you're not punished for having leftover greens because they store, you can sort of have a lot of flexibility in your build order. So those are sort of two fundamental reasons to choose the green branch of tech. I'm also going to sort of go through the green units and what weaknesses and strengths they have and why you might want to be building them. So right off the bat, right about Conduit itself, you'll notice that it has a lot of health. It has three health, um, the most of any tech building relative to its cost. So green units are very durable and the primary green attacker in the Prismata base set, which is Gauss Cannon, has five health more than anything else in the base set. So if your opponent has finite ammo, it can take them a lot of time to finish off your green units. Now, Gauss Cannon might not be the cheapest attacker, but yeah, it can definitely survive for a long time even if your opponent is whacking at them. Another key theme in green is the idea of desperation, the idea of like an all-in. And the defender in the base set for green, which is force field, sort of epitomizes that. And it's you can, it requires you to consume a drone, which is essentially like consuming the future, consuming your future for an emergency defender. But it's very, very cheap. And in crucial turns of the game, it's definitely worth it to sacrifice your drones for the present because you need defense now. And all that matters is this, is this one turn, this one crucial turn where you're going to spend all your green and turn the game around. So now let's look at some of the random green units. This is just a sample, and I want to talk about some more green mechanics. So the first one I'm going to go through is Cluster Bolt. It's actually a spell, um, and what it does is essentially it gives you a lot of attack, a lot of attack in the form of Gauss charges, and gives your opponent also a lot of attack. Now, why would you want to do this? So why does giving both sides more attack benefit green? And the reason is green units have the most health. So, you know, it's beneficial if both you and your opponent gain gained attack if your units have five health and their units only have one health. And in general, green wants to increase the chaos of the game. Sort of the green units are all a bunch of unpredictable, uncontrollable robots, and they basically want the game to be chaotic. And when your units have more health than your opponents, any chaos just means your units will sur survive better in the wake of the chaos. And so yeah, this is a great green unit. It also causes costs for green, which means, but you can store green, so it's actually not too difficult to buy. And it just creates all sorts of chaos and problems for your opponent if they're not going green. Uh, secondly, we have like this little finesseful unit, Cryo Ray. It essentially messes with your opponent's defense. And both green and red have the ability to mess with your opponent's defense. Blue doesn't, but Red is sort of all about big bursts where you can suddenly uh, suddenly nullify all your opponent's defense, get through, pick off those key crucial units. Whereas green's methods of disrupting your opponent's defense is more in the form of little guys that can disrupt turn after turn after turn. So Cryo Ray, it can chill your opponent's defenders turn after turn after turn and give your opponent a hard time calculating their defense uh, time after time. And it doesn't really have the burstiness of the red uh, chillers, but it's very, very annoying to play against. The next, next green unit is Gauss Charge. Um, it's essentially just a one-time attacker that attacks for one. It's like a little bomb. Um, the thing is, it's very cheap, but you don't get to choose to save it up. It must be used as soon as you buy it. And um, But fortunately for you, the green resource itself is storable, so you can just store up a ton of green and buy this on the crucial turn when you actually need to. Um, there's a similar blue unit called Pixie. It's a bit more expensive and it can be storable, but crucially, the blue resource itself isn't storable. So there's a fundamental difference between the green little bomb, which is Gauss Charge, and the blue little bomb in that the green is about storing up a ton of the resource itself and committing to the Gauss Charge when you actually want to go all in. Whereas the blue pixie, um, the advantage is that you can store it up and sort of threaten to use it every turn, but it does require a turn-to-turn -turn buying commitment where you got to buy it every turn. Um, 
The next green unit is Trinity Drone. It's essentially a big drone. It, it upgrades your drones into these really fat uh, drones with five health. And um, this is a very, very crucial unit in Prismata because almost always, if you want to build up a big economy in Prismata, you got to defend your drones because your drones have such low health. But Trinity Drone changes all of that. You can let your opponent whack away at your Trinity Drones, not defend them at all, and just build up a ton of them. And your opponent, even though they're whacking away at them, it takes so long to kill one that it doesn't matter. So pretty awesome. Um, Venge Cannon is is another unit that requires consuming drones, and this is a very all-in unit, but it's very epic. You can store up a ton of green, and it's essentially a very potent attacker that consumes your drones to build. So you can be attacking for zero, just storing up a ton of green and a ton of drones, a ton of gold, your opponent's like, what's he doing? What's he gonna do? And then suddenly you just go all in, build five Venge Cannons, and you're attacking out of 10 for nowhere. And I think as you can sort of see through a lot of the units I've talked about, green is all about uh, building flexibility. You can just store up the resource, store up the money, and your opponent has to guess what are you going to suddenly do? Is is my is he going to go all in? Um, it's very difficult to play against, and that is green's biggest strength. Um, and this is an example of a rushy green unit, uh, Fission Turret. So sort of all three colors in Prismata can be sort of rushy and can be sort of defensive. And um, they all have different properties of rushing and different ways of trying to get to the late game. And green's way of rushing is sort of through Fission Turret, which is a unit that's very cheap as a rusher, but also it gives you a very smooth transition away from the rush. So green has a lot of flexibility because it can be stored and fission turret adds to this by you can rush it but then when you don't need it anymore because your opponents already put down defense you can convert it to a ton of green resources um, the next green unit is actually often bought not in conjunction with green units aegis is one of the cheapest defenders in the game now I was talking all this about how green doesn't need to defend itself because your units already have so much health. Um, so Aegis is often almost used as a complement to other colors to help defend the fragile, um, the low health units of other colors. But also, um, sometimes you know when you're setting up, you do need to defend her early and that's what Aegis is for as well. Even if you're going all green, it takes a while to convert all your drones to something else. So maybe you want an Aegis early just to soak up some damage. Um, the last two units are sort of just examples of late game green units. So these are sort of the ideal late game game states that green would like to get to if you're trying to play a big econ game with like Trinity drones or something. Uh, one is Zamora, which is like an, a spaceship from an alternate universe. It takes six turns to construct, but what it essentially says, as long as you've got green, you've got everything. It allows you to convert green into both money and attack every single turn. So you don't need to worry about your drones anymore. You can just make a pile of conduits, store up a ton of green, and Zamora will win the game for you by itself. Um, Fabricator goes about the late game in a different way. It essentially builds up a very high amount of health. It makes a Gauss Cannon every single turn for uh, eight turns, and Gauss Cannons have five health. So this single unit can make 40 health worth of units, and it's very, very good against strategies with finite ammo. And getting to a late game where your Gauss Fabricator has made eight Gauss Cannons is just so difficult to beat because everything has so much health. So that's all the green units. Uh, to wrap up, green is sort of all about this idea of an all-in timing attack, the flexibility because green is storable, your opponent doesn't know what you're going to suddenly do, and the units also have very high health. It has a very strong late game in that you can just have so much health at the end and have so much green stored up and your opponent has no way of disrupting that, or it has a very strong early game where you can threaten a lot of all-ins and also get stuff like fission turret to start attacking early but also transition into a very Move, transition very smoothly into a prosperous mid game. All right, let's talk about the blue units in Prismata. Blue is produced by Blastforge, and blue is all about defense and beef. So, uh, Wall here is sort of the fundamental blue unit in the base set. It's the best defender in the base set by a lot. And blue units, unlike green units, which don't heal at the end of turn because green units are fragile, blue units heal at the end of turn, which means with a single wall, since wall has three health, you can absorb two health over and over and over again and the wall will heal back to full health. And overall, green just has very sturdy units. So 
Steel Splinter, it has three health. It might not have as much as the Gauss Cannon, but it can both attack and block. And the fact that you have these options is very valuable. So another theme of blue is that it gives you a lot of option value. Even though the resource itself must be spent every turn and it's a bit clunky in terms of the economy, you know, you've got to spend the blue every single turn because it decays if you don't and you sort of have to have the right ratios of gold to be able to spend your blue every turn. The units themselves give you a lot of flexibility. Uh, most of them can attack or block like Steel Splitter. Um, and yeah, let's go through some sample blue units. So the first one I want to talk about is Steel Forge. So, and we saw green con converting your drones very quickly into your attackers. Um, Blue also has its own way of getting rid of drones in the late game where you don't need your economy anymore. Uh, Steel Forge does this, but it, it's got less of an all-in feel than gr green. Whereas green is all about uh, spontaneous and impulsive, suddenly going for an all-in. Blue is all about slow and steady, having a plan, having a very predictable plan from the start, a very efficient plan that gives you a lot of units in the long run. And Steel Forge shows this. It essentially allows you to convert your drones into steel splitters, which is the basic blue attacker, over the course of many turns. Um, all right, Core is sort of, uh, it's a nice little utility unit that allows you to convert your attack into gold. So earlier I was talking about how every color has a different way of rushing, and the strength of a blue rush is once you don't need your attack anymore, you can just build up units like Auride Core and convert your attack into something else. Um, so this is very effective as a transition. You can do an early rush, force down a wall from your opponent to slow down their economy, and then start using your attack to bolster your own economy. Um, Pixie is like a little grenade, and I talked about this when I was talking about the green units, but Pixie is sort of the blue counterpart to Gauss Charge. So it's better than Gauss Charge in that uh, you don't have to use it right away. You can decide when to use it. It's a grenade that can stay there until you decide to pop it, but um, the blue resource itself is not storable. So if you want to build up a lot of pixies, you actually have to build one every single turn. Once again, this idea of slow and steady. It's not like green where you can store up a ton of, gr ton of green resource, keep your options open, and suddenly get 10 pixies. You can't do that with pixie. Um, you have to get one every single turn. Uh, another property of blue units is this frontline mechanic. Frontline means they can be attacked directly, which is a weakness, but often your units are so beefy and it's so difficult to kill them that you don't even care. And Shredder is a perfect example of a rushy blue unit. It's The weakness is frontline, but you can sort of get them out so quickly and put your opponent on the back foot that they can't even try to get enough attack to kill these things via frontline. And they have a lot of health anyway. So earlier I was saying how green and red both have ways of messing with your opponent's defense and getting through defenders. Even though blue can't do that, and overall blue is maybe a more defensive color, it builds up attacks slowly and steadily instead of having sudden bursts, it does have ways to get around defenders of its own. So Dead Eye Operative is a unit, it's, it's a sniper, uh, it can destroy a drone right away, immediately, even if your opponent has defense. You just click it, click the Dead Eye, and your opponent's drone will die. And um, this is sort of how gr blue gets around defense. Blue can win the game without ever killing all your walls. It'll just pick off your drones from behind the lines. And um, a similar unit is Apollo. Um, Apollo is a sort of a bigger version of Deadeye. It can kill any unit with three or less health. So with Deadeye and Apollo, you can win a game without killing your opponent's walls. And this is sort of blue's problem. This is how blue solves the issue of your opponent getting defense. Blue just circumvents the walls completely and just destroys the units it wants to destroy anyway. Um, and finally, green is just about, sorry, blue is just about big beefy units in general. You know, Omega Splitter, it's a very simple unit, but it's a very effective unit. It attacks for three, defends for six, and it requires a heavy commitment to blue. Um, a lot of the strongest blue units require a heavy commitment to blue uh, in the form of they cost three blue, and the only way to get three blue is to buy three Blast Forges, which takes a while. But 
blue really, really rewards you for being committed. If you're willing to get a lot of Blast Forges, the units get very strong very quickly. And um, yeah, Omega Splitter is just a huge unit. Blue has the biggest units in the game in general. And um, Defense Grid is the best defender in the game. Uh, it, it, it has seven health. Not only that, it absorbs for seven. So every single turn, it can absorb six attack essentially and heal back to full health. And furthermore, it further bolsters your economy. Um, it's just a great feeling to get a Defense Grid and then watch your economy grow behind your gigantic wall and your opponent can't do anything so um, yeah so I think that gives you a good sampling of blue units overall blue is all about um, slow and steady a lot of defense big units building up to a lot of tech rewards you for high tech trying to win the game with very high tech or high tech snipers or big units um, and yeah it's all about being slow and steady having a game plan having a plan of how your economy is going to interact with your tech and um, because the blue resource isn't storable you got to make sure you plan many turns ahead in terms of what you're going to build and of course the weakness of this is your opponent can play around it your opponent can it's easier for your opponent to look at your options and play around your strategy whereas green you could your you had a million options each turn because you could just store the green your opponent you're very unpredictable this is the downside of blue but at the same time it's biggest strength in that you can just slowly and steadily grind your opponent down all right let's talk about the red units in prismata red's philosophy is strength through numbers and having a bunch of units work together as a society to accomplish a greater goal Red is produced by Animus, which makes two reds every turn. So unlike Conduit and Blast Forge, you can make two units a turn to their one, which just gives you a jump in the early game. And the red attacker is very cheap and very efficient. It's Tarsier. Um, now, the weakness is that, in general, red units have lower health. So you do need to protect them to uh, for them to be worth it. Uh, and Tarsier only has one health. But to keep it alive, Rhino is a perfect unit to do that. Um, Rhino is sort of the red defender in the base set, but the key is Rhino also attacks. And another key property of red is that red can counterattack unlike green or blue. Um, so Rhino is a prompt defender, which means it can defend right away, that also attacks the next turn. So it essentially allows you to block and attack on the, at the same time in a single Rhino. The other colors can't do this. All green units and blue units, if they're a blocker that can block right away, they don't attack. If you want to attack, you've got to not get defense for a turn to do so. So this is very important because you can seize the initiative away from your opponent. Put the tempo of the game in your favor with counter attackers like Rhino. Uh, so let's go through some random set red units. The first one, Shadow Fang, it's just essentially a big Tarsier. Um, it attacks for two at a very low cost. It does require a somewhat heavy commitment to red. You need three reds, and um, as a result, you need more than one animus. So, like blue, red has problems where you need it, it decays at the end of your turn. So you need to make sure um, you get a lot of tech. You need commitment for red to really pay off for you. But if you are willing to invest in Shadow Fangs, they are the most efficient attacker in the whole game. When left unchecked, your opponent can just make a massive pile of Shadow Fangs and it's impossible to defend against. The only way to defeat this unit is to counter attack. It only has one health, you've got to put pressure on the fact that it only has one health or you're just going to crumble under the onslaught of Shadow Fangs. Um, and the next unit I wanted to feature is similar, Amparilla. Uh, so I was talking about how green has an ideal end game it likes to get to with all this stored green and all this high tech and all this health. Blue has just the perfect defense, the perfect economy. This is red's late game. Red might not have the defense or the tech required for the late game, but red has quadratic growth. Um, so Amparilla, it essentially it amplifies how much damage your Tarsiers do. So, you know, if you let Red get to the end game with Amparilla, this just grows completely out of control. If you have like eight Tarsiers, each Amparilla makes each Tarsier attack for one more, and your attack can just grow so much faster than any other color can. So this is essentially Red's late game. Um, and yeah, once again, it's, a, it's an attacker that you got to protect. It's got relatively low health, but um, it's got such high damage output. And so, okay, next we get to Husk. Husk is the red defender. Now, I was talking about how, oh, 
blue is the most defensive color. Um, well, that's sort of true. Every color has their strengths in defense. So blue has absorb, which is very important for defense. Green, I was talking about the green Aegis unit, which is the cheapest defense in the game. Now, what is red strength in defense? Even though the units have low health, red strength is numbers. And having a lot of husks, which is a blocker for one, but it's often better to have a pile of husks than have one large defender because it allows you to win finesse games on defense and always defend for the perfect amount and out finesse your opponent. So this is red strength uh, in defense is just having a lot of units, having a lot of options of what to defend with. And this is the way red rushes in Electrovore. So I was talking about how greens, why you would want to rush with green. The green's advantages as a rushing color, blue's advantages as a rushing color. Now, what's red's advantage as a rushing color? Um, it allows you to harness your other resources and convert them into attack. And Electrovore demonstrates this perfectly. It allows you to convert energy into attack. So energy is usually what you need to build up a further economy. But if you're trying to rush, you don't need your energy anyway. And Electrovore allows you to efficiently harness that energy and convert it into attack. So there's a lot of little red units like Electrovore that give you a lot of flexibility when deciding what to rush with. And this is red's biggest strength in the early game. Um, the next unit, Blood Rager, is also plays to the strength. So I showed you Oride Core when I talked about blue, how blue can rush and then suddenly decide to transition into econ and make use of its attack to generate more gold. Um, red can't use its attack to generate more gold, but red can use its attack to generate more attackers. So Blood Rager, it's, it costs three attack to build, but if your three attack isn't going to do anything anyway because your opponent has a big absorbing wall, you can put it into Blood Rager and further grow your attack. And then once you get the first Blood Rager, that Blood Rager itself gives you more attack, and then that allows you to get more Blood Ragers. So, an, uh, basically, uh, an enraged army of Blood Ragers can grow out of hand very quickly. And that's sort of also how Red uses its extra attack. Um, the next Red unit is very interesting. Um, it's another sort of late game unit. It's an ideal uh, game state you want to get to with Red. Uh, so, Ossified Drone is essentially... It's essentially... A, uh, it upgrades your drones from one health blockers into two health blockers, and it multiplies itself. Um, so, so it essentially slowly infests all your drones and makes them super drones that are good at keeping your more vulnerable attackers like Shadowfang alive. And these things multiply very quickly if left unchecked. Um, so, you know, if you let the red uh, player get to the late game with a ton of ossified drones and a ton of shadow things, it's basically impossible to destroy them. Um, the weakness of ossified drone though is there's only one it can multiply, but if you ever, ever let it become extinct, you'll never get it again. So it's very important when you're trying to build up your ossified drones to never let it become extinct and keep infesting if you think your opponent can kill all your existing ossified drones. Alright, so another helper to Red's attack is Frostbite. Um, so earlier I was talking about how green has these chilling units that can chill every single turn and mess with your opponent's defense and make their defending a headache. Uh, Frostbite, on the contrary, is more of an all-in unit. Even though green is in general more of an all-in color, Frostbite is more of an all-in uh, chiller in that you need to sacrifice it to use it, but it chills for three, so which is more than one, and um, you can build up a lot of Frostbites. You use them all up on the same turn, which is almost guaranteed to get through to your opponent's defense. You can pick off whatever you want. You can, you can freeze all their defense and then get through to their units, kill whatever you want. The next turn, the Frostbites aren't there anymore, but it doesn't matter because you've gotten through and destroyed the thing you want to destroy. So... It's very, very effective at pressuring your opponent if they've got a few units that they must keep alive. Um, and yeah, so it's a bit different than the green way of messing with your opponent's defense, but it's very, very scary. And um, the last unit I wanted to talk about is Blood Pact. Uh, it makes four husks, four defenders for yourself, and it makes an attacker for your opponent. So earlier there was a green unit that made attack for both sides. Uh, cluster bolt and I was talking about why is this why does this benefit the green philosophy well because green wants chaos green says ha huh, my units have more health than your units therefore if both sides have attack have a ton of attack and the game becomes very chaotic in the wake of the chaos I'm gonna end up better because my units are gonna survive more um, now Red, what is Red's weakness? Red's weakness is a lot of its units have low health. It's very desperate for defense. And 
Blood Pact essentially gives you defense at all costs. Yes, it gives your opponent an extra attacker, but it's such cheap defense, and the extra attacker doesn't matter if you you just got so much firepower. You're just gonna kill their extra you're just gonna kill their extra attacker as long as you can keep your attackers alive. So to sum up, yeah, red is all about strength and numbers, a lot of flexibility in terms of what units to buy because they're also cheap and you've got so much red right from the beginning. You can get two red off of a single animus. So it's all about having a lot of options, having a lot of different units, a lot of different attackers and blockers, and just having a ton of options every turn in terms of what to attack with, what to defend with. You know, you can think of the red units as like forming, they're sort of like the humanoid. They're sort of the most human of the three colors. And it's like, a bunch of intelligent humanoids working together as a society okay this turn you attack i'll hold the fort next turn i'll all attack you hold the fort and working together can be very efficient and very fun commanding a red army gives you so many options and if you do it well it's very very difficult to stop